I'm actually done. I only have one more left. Okay. Good afternoon. Council meeting, January 24th, 2018. Jesse Maylari? Here. Council Member Sanchez? Here. Council Member Kern? Here. Council Member Sullivan? Here. Ready? Okay, uh, there'll be no closed session meeting on item one. Item two, conference with real property negotiator involving a portion of Alcora Zone, APN 1620825-1, negotiating parties, City of Oceanside, Rancho Del Oro, Oceanside Partners. Under negotiations are priced in terms of the lease of the property. Item 2B, conference with real property negotiator involving a portion of Oceanside Small Craft Harbor, APN 1431209. Negotiating parties, Oceanside Small Craft Harbor District and Pacific Suites Incorporated. Under negotiations, priced in terms of the lease of the property. Craft Harbor. Uh, no negotiating parties are Oceanside Small Craft Harbor District and Pacific Suites Incorporated. Under negotiations are price and terms for the lease of the real property. Again, no action under the Brown Act to report, and there was no meeting on item one. Thank you. Consent calendar. Yes, consent calendar, items four through nine. Move approval. Go public. Please vote. Motion approved, four zero. Thank you. Yeah, there's a little feedback uh, coming in from the deputy mayor's microphone right now. The IT is working on it. Okay, thank you. It's my fault. Item number 10, five-year financial forecast. Good evening, Deputy Mayor, Honorable Deputy Mayor and council members, Jane McPherson, Financial Services Director. I'm here tonight to present the five-year financial forecast. The purpose of the forecast is to identify financial trends, identify changes in expenditures, project the cost of maintaining current service levels, and we are recommending that the City Council accept the fiscal year 2018 to 2023 general fund forecast. These are the assumptions that we used and putting some of the assumptions that we used in putting together the forecast. We assumed static conditions. We used a rollover budget for all maintenance and operation expenses. It does not include any no programs for the city. It includes all known and negotiated personnel costs as well as placeholders for outlying years. It includes monies to maintain, which is 12% of our budget for our Healthy Cities Reserves, and all required funding for restricted funds such as workers' comp and risk. Additional assumptions, it does include all PERS increases based on the July 2017 actuarial report and December 2016 rate increase that caused the lowering of the PERS discount rate, which in turn raises our rates. So you'll note that up here on the screen, it shows the new net cost increases by year. Uh, as you see in years 1920, 2021, and onward is that's when we're greatly impacted, and it is reflected in the forecast. Overall, the, the increase from 2019 to 2022, 23 is 11.8 million dollars additional for the general expense for the general fund. Uh, just to give you some what the cost is based on our two groups for safety for PERS, it's 40 this next year, 40.89 percent of total compensation, and in 2022-23. It'll be 
For miscellaneous, it'll be 28.54% for next year, and then for 22-23, when we hit somewhat of the peak, it's going to be at 39.38%. In order, if you review the forecast, you'll note that we ha do have a deficit in years three, four, and five. This deficit is reflected on the screen of 0.68 million in 2021, just over a million in 21-22, and then 3.35 million in 2022-23 for a total of 5.04 million. Uh, these are the totals of what we expect for next year on the short term. We will, we expect to have 152.06 million in revenues and general fund expenditures of 149.74, which leaves additional capacity of 2.32 million. However, we do have a capacity, but we're not looking to spend it. We're looking to because of increasing PERS rates, we don't recommend any addition of any new ongoing costs unless there's a new revenue to offset it. Uh, we are looking to continue modified hiring, hiring restrictions. Any potential one-time cost may be considered as the general fund budget is assembled prior to going to council uh, in April for our, our workshop. Any general fund ending balance for 2018-19, is that if we have any surplus at the end of the year, that will be placed in our set-aside account in order to pay down additionally on our unfunded liability at PERS. Our recommendation is that the City Council accept the fiscal year 2018 through fiscal year 2023 general fund five-year financial forecast. I'm available for any questions you may have. Very good. Thank you. No public on the We have some questions. Okay. Council Murphy. Thank you. Um, in your estimation, what would be, uh, do you have anything uh, to tell us about um, health care uh, costs uh, going forward? Uh, health care costs do continue to rise, however, the employer portion of the cost has been capped and we have had it capped at the same level for many years now. So any new increases to employee health care is passed on to the employee and they are paying it. Do, you, do they project any uh, increases going forward? Um, I would have to get with Rob who gets, uh, looks at that and we can get that information to you. Rob, there you are. You might answer. Thank you for coming to answer that. Good evening, Honorable Deputy Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, Council Member Seller, um, at this point it's too early in the game to project what 2019 is going to look like. Um, just to give you some perspective for our United Healthcare plan um, in just Overall, they, they experienced uh, almost an 11% increase from 2017. Kaiser, on the other hand, we actually saw uh, just under a 5% decrease. So there's a lot of factors that influence um, whether rates go up and down. You know, there's the utilization, the amount of members that are in a particular plan, um, any catastrophic type of claims. So. It's hard to tell at this point, plus we're working with our broker to see what additional options we may have for 19 in terms of plan design. Uh, we're looking at potential options to join larger pools that may provide employees uh, additional options in terms of the type of carriers that are available. Uh, we may stick with a similar looking plan that we have currently. Um, at this point, my conversations with our, our broker is that as we get closer to May, and June, that's the time where they go out for renewals or for bids from uh, the carriers. So right now my work with them is just to identify what options we may even have in front of us to consider for 2019. And then as we get closer to May and June, we'll start knowing some hard numbers of what it would look like and what's a realistic option for the city to move towards. 
Well, I, I just wanted to comment because every every employee in the city is affected. Um, in, in my case, it was uh, considerable. I, by the time 2020 rolls around, I'll probably be paying the city to work here uh, with the health care costs. So <laughs> it, it dropped considerably. I mean, I'll, I'll be working for nothing here pretty soon. So. I'll second. Council Member Kearney. That was my, that was just another cool one. That was it. Please come. Motion approved, 4 zero. Thank you. Thank you, item number 14. Yes, item number 14 is request by Deputy Mayor Lowry and Council Member Kearney to amend City Council Policy 100-10, appointments to commissions, boards, and committees. This item is about the situation that we currently have with the lack of participation due to attrition or resigning, resigning by people who are on different committees and commissions and boards. The city has a number of advisory groups and these are among those groups. The policy advisory committees hear many of the issues which come before the council and they offer valuable input and advice there are currently a number of these commissions, boards, and committees which are losing numbers and have vacancies. Up until now, the appointment to these committees has been left to the mayor. We have a number of urgent issues which our committees are beginning to work on, such as the Arts Master Plan and others. We need all the seats filled on these committees so they can do the work which we as a council and as a city count on them to do. These committees are representative of the public. The public's input is valuable to the council and we need to have this input. So I am asking the council to approve a change in the policies in the event that there's a vacancy in the mayor's position, which is the situation we're in right now and have been for the last eight months. That allows the deputy mayor to move forward to recommend appointments to the committees and the work of the city can continue. All appointments will be approved by the entire council just as they are right now. So it just changes the fact that we cannot appoint anyone until there's a mayor here and that lets a lot of our peripheral infrastructure go. This allows us to make those appointments to keep the committees, commissions, and boards filled. I'll second that motion. Oh, is there a motion? No public. No public on the side. Okay. That was a motion. Okay. Thank you. No public. No public. Um, Honorable Deputy Mayor, what we'll do if everyone um, is in concurrence, we'll bring this item back as a consent item for approval at your next meeting. Please vote. Motion approved, four zero. Thank you. Item 11. Yes, item number 11 is appointment to fill the vacancy in the office of mayor or direction to staff to prepare the resolution to fill the vacancy through an election. Deputy Mayor, members of the council, I'll be very brief. Uh, we had a discussion about this issue at your last council meeting. Um, as you know, you have two options. You could uh, appoint someone to serve the remaining term for Mayor Wood. That lasts until December uh, 20. Or you, you are required to call an election if you're unable to make an appointment. You have 60 days to make that appointment. The vacancy was created on January 1st, so under your current council schedule, you'll need to make a decision by February 28th. If you wait until February 28th and you're unable to make an appointment decision, then you would be required to place it on the November ballot. Um, if you would like to be on the June ballot, then you'd have to direct us to prepare uh, the necessary resolutions for adoption at your next meeting, which would be February 7th. Um, and at the last meeting, you indicated that you wanted to solicit input from members of the public um, as to which option they preferred. Uh, the city manager's office created a, um, a link so that members of the public could send in emails. You've been receiving those emails. Uh, those emails have been uh, placed on the city's website, or at least a tally of all those emails indicating um, what members of the public were thinking has been placed on our website and um, has been distributed to you. Um, I will not go over that unless you have questions. Um, so I'm we're willing to take your direction, ready to take your direction to either make the appointment or prepare the resolutions to call the election. I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Professor Mayor, we have 14 speakers on this item. Thank you. From the public okay, two minutes, please. Can okay, I'm going to call you forward two at a time. We have two podiums. You can line up at. Uh, when the green light goes, that means you're able to start speaking. When the yellow light comes on, you have one minute remaining. And when the red light hits, that's when your time is concluded. So I'll start with our first two speakers. Our first two speakers are Roland Balmer, followed by Scott Priest. Good evening, council members. Um, as it's been laid out here, it's been eight months since any, any serious any business has been taken care of, and we need to resolve. Uh, the move the mic up close to your mouth. Oh. Thank you. And we need to resolve a lot of major city business now, putting off till in a special election to be for the city to appoint a mayor. It's going to take a long time. And we need things done now. And as all four of you have been duly elected by a citywide election, the four of you have been interested by the city citizens of Oceanside to appoint a mayor and a replacement and get things resolved now. There is no time to put off. I mean, we just had the budget. Deputy Mayor Lowry has laid it all out. And there are just things that need to be done and resolved. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Scott Priest. I reside in Guahomies Middle Subdivision in Oceanside. Um, I was here at the last city council meeting on January 10th. Um, to put it bluntly, I was extremely appalled at the conduct of the mayor to attempt that day. Uh, you can figure out who that was. You can look back into the records. I won't embarrass him uh, tonight. Um, regarding the qualities necessary for a mayor, it seems very clear that a mayor or city council member, for that matter, must insist that all meetings and attendees conduct themselves in a civil manner so that citizens feel so citizens don't feel intimidated or unsafe while at a city meeting. I had a family member attend that meeting that night. She's attended hundreds, if not thousands, of city council meetings throughout the county. Um, she felt intimidated by the lack of respect accorded to her, to other speakers, to those that serve on the city council. To allow the spirit of rudeness and intimidation to occur at that meeting on the 10th is the exact opposite of the qualities the citizens of Oceanside want in a mayor or a city council member. To quote from the movie Remember the Titans from Julius, leadership, attitude reflects leadership, captain, or in this case, captains. Thank you. Our next two speakers are Amber Newman and Sam Hindley. Hi, uh, Amber Newman. Uh, at the last meeting, a speaker stood here claiming to represent 42 neighborhoods as she falsely accused Deputy Mayor Lowry of sending an email calling for his own appointment. She said the message was disgusting and that he was disgusting for sending it. Now, I can't attest to whether or not action actually represents anyone at this point, but I can tell you without a doubt that Ms. Corso's accusation against our Deputy Mayor is 100% untrue, based solely on false assumptions and zero fact-checking. In other words, fake news. Now, I am a member of Oceanside's North Central community. Not only did Deputy Mayor Lowry not send that email, he is not affiliated with this organization. The truth is that we sent that message to the 700 plus people who have asked to receive emails from us. The truth is that we sent that message in support of our Deputy Mayor because we feel that he has done an outstanding job of fulfilling his elected responsibilities in addition to those of the Mayor for almost a year now. 
The truth is that we regularly send messages regarding a variety of candidates that we support, including, but not limited to, Jerry Kern, the Board of Supervisors, Doug Applegate for Congress, Dave Myers for Sheriff, and more. And of course, I either missed those emails or didn't find them as convenient to exploit. Despite us correcting these falsehoods in a private discussion out with her outside of chambers, Action has continued to spread the same lie in reader comments posted on the local newspaper's website, and unfortunately, we don't anticipate these defamatory statements to stop anytime soon. Perhaps it's just that she's allowed her hatred of Mr. Kern to blind her to reality, but if she is going to continue to make statements that she has already been told are untrue, how can she be trusted to tr be honest about anything else? Sure, for example. It is my opinion that Ms. Corso owes Mr. Lowry and the entire city of Oceanside a very public apology. While we don't expect that to happen, we feel that it is important to set that record straight. Thank you. Honorable members of the City Council and Deputy Mayor Lowry, uh, since Zach Beck has respectfully withdrawn his his desire to elevate the mayor, and since the natural course of action in elevating my friend Deputy Mayor to the position cannot be achieved through voting consensus, I honor the invitation to present my case to be considered for interim mayor. This great city has undergone a tremendous evolution in the past 20 years, and Mayor Wood and this long-standing council and the employees that we recognize tonight are to thank for all of that. Prior to settling in Oceanside, I spent a year on the road performing stand-up comedy. I explored all four corners of the United States and almost every state in between. I performed in almost every city that I could. As a comic, I was able to immerse myself in the underbelly of America. I learned that the American dream is still alive, but hope is depleting. In many of our growing cities, the people who built the opportunities can no longer afford to live there. In many of our smaller cities, the hope is still alive, but the reality is desperate. In contrast, Oceanside presents opportunity for tangible success for those willing to work hard and rewards them with a pleasant environment which is still affordable by California standards. When I moved here, marijuana was still not legal and what I affectionately call politics was not the hot button issue. I moved here to establish my roots and to catapult my enterprises into the new level of growth. Oceanside's demographics are diverse in age, background, education level, and income levels. It's truly a melting pot. But I feel I possess the, the empathy needed to draw the city together, and above all else, through my careers as a financial planner, as a cannabis industry pioneer, as an actor, comedian, and television producer, I have forged two characteristics that make me an exemplary candidate for interim mayor. One, I can't be bought, and two, I cannot be silenced. Thanks for your time. I hope our next two speakers are Robert Markley, followed by Jim Hamilton. Robert Markley, 200 North El Camino Real. The citizens of Oceanside elected the beloved Jim Wood as mayor. They should be allowed to elect his replacement. This is too important a decision to be left to three people, even the, even the city council people. Uh, just like it's too important to allow other important changes to the future of Oceanside to be made by three people, such as changing the zoning on open spaces, such as parks, beaches, golf courses, and changing the zoning on farmland. This could change the face and the future of Oceanside forever should not be left to three people. It should be put out to the voters. Thank you. Hello. I have two points I wish to make. The first is that, um, unfortunately, the North County Film Club, which has been a hidden success for the city of Oceanside, has been forced to close because the Mission Marketplace Theater in Oceanside has been shut down. The second thing is that uh, I'm speaking in favor of appointing Chuck Lowry for mayor. Um, two main reasons. One, I can't imagine all of the clawing that will go on he sees the different sides, and it's not going to help anybody, and it's certainly not going to help the public. 
but if we could go through this without the cat calls and the rest of it, um, maybe. But I think uh, Mr. Lowry has done an excellent job to date, and I expect him to continue on that in that vein. I've known Chuck for a lot of years, and this is uh, what I know from him. This is what he's shown me over and over again. So, you know what I think. Thank you very much. Our next two speakers are Charlene Hamilton, followed by Adrian Hakes. Hi, I'm Charlene Hamilton. I live at 502 Portico in Oceanside. And um, I, of course, agree with Jim. We've known Jim, uh, Chuck Lowry for a long time, and it just seems that You've got a deputy mayor. His job is supposed to be to re to help when the mayor is indisposed. And so it seems only logical for Chuck to uh, take over as the mayor and somebody be appointed until there is an election. Also, an election, uh, you know, if you do a special election, that's money that we really don't need to spend. So that's my opinion. Thank you. Good evening, Deputy Mayor Lowry and Council Members. I am Adrienne Hakes, and I'm here requesting to be considered for interim mayor to finish out the term of Mayor Wood. I understand the Council is looking for someone with political experience, and I have over 20 years of political experience here in Oceanside, primarily in two positions. The first position is my current one as a library trustee for the city of Oceanside, and I've been serving as a board member for 20 years. The second was as a school board member for Oceanside Unified, which is an elected position, which I served for 16 years. I've served three terms as president for each of these boards in both positions. I interacted with employee groups and community members as I worked to meet their needs. Hence, over the years, I have learned to work for consensus Furthermore, I belong to several community organizations that work to improve the lives of our citizens. I belong to the Oceanside Charitable Foundation, where I'm on the board and on their grants committee. We give grants to nonprofit organizations to improve the quality of life in Oceanside. I'm also a member of the Museum of Art, which enriches our, our citizens' lives through art, and I'm a member of the local branch of the American Association of University Women, which supports education for women and girls. Since moving downtown this past summer, I have been attending the Main Street Association meetings. I've lived in Oceanside for 40 years, and uh, I have worked in North County as I raised my five children. Each area that I have lived in over the years, including a boat in the harbor, has given me a different perspective on the needs of our community, and I can't imagine living anywhere else but Oceanside. I've seen Oceanside make many positive changes over the years, and I look forward to being a part of the process in years to come as the future mayor. Thank you very much. Our next two speakers are Bob, and I apologize if I pronounced this incorrectly, I think it's o Oker, and uh, our second speaker is Steve Hasty. Uh, my name is Bob Ogle, native of Oceanside. I haven't been to these meetings in a while, but I do try to follow what's going on in the city council quite closely through reading the newspapers. Um, I, for one, I, all of you were elected at large for the last time. I guess we're going to district elections in the next election. I strongly believe that we need an elective mayor in this city. I strongly believe that. I think that's really what the people want. Uh, I realize all the problems. Uh, despite the fact that you're two to two now and Chuck is the mayor, you've been getting along just as well as you did before 
when when Jim was here. So I think you ought to bite the bullet and do the election. If you appoint one of the city council members, you're still going to have to have another election to replace the city council member unless you appoint one of those. So I strongly think you just bite the bullet now and go with the election and get it over with. And let the people decide who they want as mayor. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Hasty, resident here of Oceanside. Our city's been without a mayor for eight months, and if this city actually had term limits, that wouldn't be the case, because Mayor Wood and half the council here wouldn't be able to run. That's not the issue tonight, but we've already heard from the Oceanside public about who should be our mayor. If we're going to do a fair way, then in my opinion, we should appoint the runner-up for the 2016 election. Your little email poll you had with 79 people responded, but in the 2016 election, 14,734 citizens of Oceanside already voted for Jim Gibson, who's here tonight, and if Jim Gibson is willing to step up and fill the position as he already went through the process, he already faced the Oceanside public in an election, and he already went through the process of reaching out to the community and gaining over 14,000 votes, that would be the only logical person to appoint. Jim Gibson's already took the effort to run for election. He's already had a history of 20 years of public service. If we were to do a special election, a June election only benefits Chuck Lowry as he could run for mayor in June and if he fails to run for his seat again in November for city council. A November election only benefits Jerry Kern because if Jerry Kern loses his bid for his supervisor in June, then he could run for mayor in November. I, I, I proclaim if we're trying to save the $75,000 that it would take to put this on the election, then the only fair way would be to uh, appoint someone who's already ran for mayor that the Oceanside public has already voted for, and I say that 14,734 votes is enough from the public to appoint Jim Gibson to replace Jim Wood as the Oceanside mayor. Thank you. Our next two speakers are Jimmy... Jimmy Knott and Victor Roy. Um, <clears throat> Deputy Mayor, Council Members, Jimmy Knott, 127, Surrey Lane. Even though I've been asked to take and uh, run or take and accept or whatever you're going through for your procedure for mayor, I think it would be more appropriate to take this to election because of a few items. First off, I want to say I appreciate City Clerk uh, Beck's decision not to go after or accept the mayoral position. He is a man of integrity and family, which I respect, and I cannot take and fault that. Thank you, Zach. There is an old true adage that the root of most problems lies at the feet of improper or inadequate communication. This country was also developed with compromise, consensus building, and mutual respect. Any time there's been a problem here in Oceanside, especially on the dais, is when those items have been ignored. What is needed is someone that could take the two sides and bring them together. Or to take and stop everyone and say, let's talk. Let's find an area of compromise. I've been able to do that behind the scenes. And I know that behind the scenes, each of you have also reached out to the other side. But there's always been someone in the way. Let's take and see what we can do to take and open those pathways, to take and do something for this city and quit making it a zoo. Thank you. Hey, good evening, Deputy Mayor and Council Members. Victor Roy, Rancho San Luis Rey here in Oceanside. I know the council has the power to appoint, but I look out to the people of the city of Oceanside who have the power to elect. I believe the election is the way to go. Uh, let the people decide who will become the next mayor, $25,000 to $75,000 to put it on 
June or November is a very small sum and let the people have their voice to do that. I think what's critically important in all due respect to uh, Deputy Mayor Lowry is when we look at Mayor Jim Wood's letter of recommendation of who to appoint to the council, he recommended two people, neither of which was Deputy Mayor Lowry. So you have to consider that strongly since Mayor Jim Wood was elected by overwhelming majorities in consecutive elections. He appointed Deputy Mayor Lowry, but he didn't recommend him. So let the people vote in the election. Thank you. Our next two speakers are Dana Corso, followed by Amanda Nation. Good evening, Deputy Mayor and Council. My name is Dana Corso. I live at 5838, Jeffrey, 5838 Ranch here on Jeffrey's Ranch. I'm the president of ACTION, which is the Alliance of Citizens to Improve Oceanside Neighborhoods. ACTION led the fight to defeat Proposition E and F alongside GSMOL and OMA, protecting our seniors, veterans, and widows and families on fixed incomes in our mobile home communities. I was personally asked by Deputy Mayor Chuck Lowry in 2014 to run for city council in the hopes that one of us would get elected. I agreed with contingencies, those being we agreed to support the mobile home community. We agreed to support South Morrow Hills and the agricultural community. We agreed to oppose the Melrose extension and Rancho Del Oro interchange. And we agreed to, re uh, to work on reopening Jeffrey's Ranch Road, my neighborhood, for safety purposes. No sooner did my name get on the ballot, and Mr. Lowry would never return my calls. Mr. Lowry voted in favor of Villa Storia, which is a vote against the mobile home park. Mr. Lowry has given direction to city staff to move forward with high-density housing in South Morrow Hills, which obviously is not conducive with agricultural land, and therefore is a vote against protecting South Morrow Hills. I have attended both scoping meetings, whereas nobody spoke in favor of this development. Mr. Lowry, you haven't attended any of them. Our city staff, the city planners, the planning commission, the chambers of commerce, action and the community said no but mr lowry is now working for the developers and the marijuana industry following the money deputy mayor lowry you have broken campaign promises and you cannot be trusted the mayor's seat is an elected position we the people of oceanside deserve to elect our next mayor and not be swindled by any of your appointments with all due respect to anybody that's here to be appointed by the council for mayor i urge you not to fall victim of this council majority mr kern mr feller and mr lowry the citizens of the city want to know your positions on many controversial issues. We urge you to call for an election and practice what you preach. Democracy, folks, that's all we ask for. Thank you. I would encourage Thank all you, you, you let the other speakers talk for a Thank you. I would encourage everybody to Thank you so much. support SOAR, get involved with action Thank as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lowry, and good luck. Maybe you should go back into the baking business. Right, our next two speakers are Lisa Hamilton and Sheila Keita. Oh, I'm so sorry, Amanda. My apologies. No, no, you're, you're still up, actually. I, my apologies. All right, I don't have a timer. <laughs> thank you. I, uh, Honorable Deputy Mayor and Council, thank you for the opportunity to address you all. I've been um, active in this issue in uh, correcting and understanding the facts with both the city attorney and the city clerk, and I would like to thank them for the clarification. Um, I was in attendance at the last meeting, and I would like to thank Councilman uh, Feller. You brought up a lot of good points. You wanted to know how the citizens could be fully engaged in this process and how we could understand if the citizens truly understood that this was even an option. I think the answer is pretty clear. There are only 60-something people here in attendance. Only 79 people took your survey. When the, the last time Mayor Wood was elected, 23,000 people voted for him. 36,000 people voted for the mayor's office. There are 89,000 registered voters in Oceanside. 
That means 41% of them turned out to vote for mayor. It's a really important, really important position. It should not be up to three people. It should go to the voters. Voting is our most sacred right and privilege as Americans. As an Oceanside resident, taxpayer, and voter, I would like the chance to vote for this position. Thank you. Now our next two speakers are Lisa Hamilton and Sheila Keita. Good evening, Deputy Mayor Lowry and Council Members. I'm Lisa Hamilton, 323 South Dittmar. In the past, I have worked on campaigns for both Councilman Sanchez and for Chuck Lowry. I like them both. I enjoyed working on the campaigns, but I think we need an election. I do not feel that a mayor for three years should be appointed. We had a lot of voter turnout. A lot of people don't even know that they should uh, have written into the council to say that they think whoever should be appointed or that we should have an election. But people that I have spoken to personally, to a person, have wanted to have an election. And I think we should have an election in November, not in June. For one thing, it's cheaper in November. And for the second thing, more people expect an election in November. In June, very often, people don't realize that an election is happening until it's already gone by. So I think we should have an election for mayor in November. It's money well spent, and it will benefit Oceanside. Thank you. Sheila Kata. Hi, I'm Sheila Kata, and I live in Oceanside, and I love the city of Oceanside, and I'm out on the streets talking to people <clears throat> all the time. I'm the chair for, uh, the membership chair for Demco, the Democratic Club of Oceanside in Carlsbad. I make phone calls all the time. I am very politically active. I go and I knock door to door, and the thing of it is, is most of the people that I talk to, they want an election. They don't want it to be appointed. They say there's going to be an election for somebody to be elected for city council anyway, so what's the big deal? Have the, this election. And, you know, I talk to people all the time. I call for stores. I'm standing out in front of uh, uh, stores like uh, grocery stores getting signatures from people for stores. And everybody says they want an election. So, you know, and another thing that they say, they say, why can't we have like three debates with everybody who wants to run for mayor here in the city council chambers, let people here see who's running, and then, you know, have the election. That's what people want. And who's to say Chuck Lowry wouldn't win that? He could. He's got big name recognition. So anyway, I say, let's do an election. That's what the people want. Our next two speakers are Dwayne Siegman, followed by Thomas Schaefer. Good evening, uh, Deputy Mayor, Council Members, and citizens of Oceanside. Uh, my name is Dwayne Sigmund. I live here in Oceanside, and I've been here for since 1982. I've served 30 years in the Marine Corps, and I've had the privilege of uh, serving several tours in Iraq. And when they got liberated in 2003, they had never voted before for any of their officials, their mayors or government or anything. When they got the privilege to vote for the very first time. There was a lot of bloodshed in order to them have the privilege to vote. And we, and as Americans, cannot go backwards. We, we need to maintain our privilege of voting. That country, was, they were so happy to get the vote and get the little mark on their arm saying they voted. That was such a privilege. We are going backwards if we don't have an election. Uh, some of the other people already spoke. Uh, this email thing that came up. Uh, only 79 people sent in a response, and then uh, the last election, 14,700 voted for someone, Mr. Jim Gibson, and 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 the other uh, Jim Woods was ran, that was an election. We were only going to take 79 people's uh, recommendations, and there's how many people in Oceanside that don't have the opportunity to to vote? That, that, that that's very ludicrous. It's ludicrous. 
we we need to keep going forward in America and not have this problem. I'm, I'm a, happy to be here in Oceanside, and we cannot. There's a, just like our election uh, for Mr. President Trump. So many people thought he wasn't going to win, but there's the silent majority, and in Oceanside, there's more than 79 people out there that have their opinion on who should be the mayor and the city council members. So please, let's have an election. Uh, the, the money that's going to cost, well, I'm sorry, but things cost money, but we have to have our freedom, and part of freedom is voting for our elected officials to be in the office. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, Council Members, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Tom Schaefer. I'm a resident of Oceanside. And I have been very active in this past year, uh, attending many uh, events, uh, both political and non-political, in the city of Oceanside and the surrounding areas. Uh, I have run into uh, Deputy Mayor Lowry at almost every one of those events. Um, he represents the city. Uh, without prejudice uh, and has served this council in the, in the course of uh, as deputy mayor, acting mayor, uh, very honorably and I urge you to save the city uh, money in an unneeded election. Uh, I live on a budget. I don't just spend money when I don't have to um, and I, I don't see a need for this. People have the opportunity to be involved, to send letters. It was widely um, known and put out. Um, we have a 30% voting uh, participation. There's 70% people choose to stay at home. I think using the non-participation argument to uh, say we need a vote uh, falls empty. Uh, I urge you to appoint a mayor and I urge you to appoint Chuck Lowry who has proven his uh, ability to do so. Thank you. Our final speaker is Cindy Rocco. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Hi, my name is uh, Cindy Rocco, and I'm seeking the council's appointment for the mayor for the length of the duration of the term, even though I fundamentally do believe in an election. But I did want to uh, take the opportunity to, to present myself to you and my experience and qualifications. I think one of the things is that you really know about me is that I'm very real, and I would disagree with you to your face, and I'll agree with you to your face to your face and, I, um, and go move on to different issues and I think that's an actually very healthy component to have in this in this committee and being able to collaborate and coordinate and come up with real um, decisions. Oh, and also I'm very passionate and I love this city and I just love people and I really care and I think uh, what was I described as uh, bound, having boundless optimism and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Okay, um, I just put up here briefly my core education from um, Notre Dame and then from UCSD. And as you can see from this slide, um, I've had achievements at uh, both institutions with very relevant concentrations. For example, government accounting, organizational development, cost accounting, and budgeting. Um, my education has prepared me for the job of mayor. My practical work experience and leadership roles in being extremely goal-oriented and consistently produced outstanding results, always exceeding targets year over year. I think my proven leadership and real-life business financial abilities gives me a strong uh, foundation for the position. Another aspect that I feel I shows my um, compassion for others and the ability to lead is that I donated the kidney to my little brother and also I was the uh, manager of the year both corporate and retail for Charles Schwab and Company. And I just wanted to show that... Can you wrap it up? Oh, okay. Um, thank you. 
is just over the last year not even being able to run again. This is, I don't know, like 30 something events. In the last year, I've gone and participated in so many neighborhood associations, city um, plans, and workshops. And thank you. Thank you, Mayor Wood. You're, you are going to be hard to fill your shoes. Thank you. With a two minute. Yeah. You're at three right now. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rocker. Thank, thank you. Next speaker is Aaron Warren. Hello, Erin Warren, 1221 Chambord Court, Oceanside, California. Uh, this, we are already paying for an election, folks. It's called our district election. And I think we can sneak that mayor, mayor position right there. So if we, we want, we should go for an election. This is an open democracy. The people, our military, served our country, died for our country, and they fought for our democracy. So I think we should have an election and make it an open process. This is the way our election runs. I agree. So please, let's have an election and have everyone come and, and give us their story and their background and their capability. Thank you. We have one final speaker, Tanner Axe. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Tanner Axe. I am here to fill the vacancy of mayor. Um, I live at 187 South Tremont Street. I uh, am an urban planner by trade. I uh, have formal training from Arizona State University in uh, in urban planning, I started there as a uh, environmental biology major. Uh, I do have a pretty solid amount of scientific literacy, um, so I am a hundred percent behind fact-based, uh, evidence-based changes. Um, I grew up in uh, Ventura, California, which uh, is almost identical to Oceanside, the combination of Ventura and, and Oxnard. They also border a military base. They also have a, a median age of mid-late mid, mid late 50s. They also have a median income of middle 60s, thousand, $1,000 range. Um, I uh, also currently work for KQA Planning and Landscape Architecture, which is currently working on the uh, parks master plan for the city of Oceanside. So I'm involved already with uh, the city of Oceanside's uh, politics planning, I guess. Um, and I do, I have the formal training, I have the want, I have the love for the city, and I would really like your appointment. Thank you. No further speakers on this item? Okay. Just FYI, we usually have, we have another meeting scheduled at six o'clock, and we do not have anything on that part of the agenda for public hearing items. There is nothing there, so we're going to continue with where we are right now. There's no more speakers on this item. Okay, so no more speakers. I don't see any lights on from the council. Okay. Council, council, council return. Return. Thank you. I, I appreciate everybody coming out and all their comments. Um, I, you know, I understand about the election, but the idea if we had an election in November, that means this person didn't get seated until December. That means we go a whole year with that empty seat. And there's a lot of things that need to be filled between now and, and, and December uh, of this year. So I, I was in favor of appointment, and I'm going to see if we can come to some conclusion. And if we can't, I guess we will go to the election. But I would like to basically go around the room and see if there's support for any of the council members first. So I'm going to make a series of motions, and if I get a second, then we'll vote, and we'll just go, and, and if we, at the end of the day we can't agree on somebody, and then we can probably schedule an election or vote, we can kick it to the next council meeting and have, um, if we can't agree anybody on the dais, then the next council meeting we can have people like Adrian and this gentleman that spoke actually come up and apply for the job. So a lot of people didn't apply because they thought 
that we may do something tonight. So I'm going to start with Council Member Feller. I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Council Member Feller mayor. If I can get a second for that, if, if we can vote, and then we'll see. Okay, we'll second it. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I'm hoping we do that. So, and so, by now, let's just, you know, comment from colleagues if, if we can vote on Council Member Feller. Okay. There's a motion and a second, so you can vote. Motion fails. 2-2, two, two, Sanchez, Lowry, no. Okay. I'm going to make the motion for Council Member Sanchez, for Mayor. We'll see, what, if, see if there's any support. If she wants to, you know, if any second. So. You know, I, I, I know that there's no support by this council, so we can just go to the next slide. Okay. All right. Now, then, Deputy Mayor Lowry. Uh, I take the motion for Deputy Mayor Lowry. One of the things I've learned here in three years is to listen to what Council Member Feller has to say. Okay. So, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Please vote. I get, well, no, it's your, your call. Please vote. Motion fails. Two two. Sanchez Feller no. Okay. And then I'm. I don't know if I'll get a second for this, but I'm going to make a motion for myself. Just, just that everybody on the dais had an equal shot. So I don't know if any. If there's a Wait, second. Aren't you running for supervisor? I'm running for supervisor, and the idea that come to if I get this come December, we have to do it all over again. So I, I just wanted to see like the interim job. So. So, I, I made a motion for if myself. You are, if you were elected, would you take the seat if you're appointed? If I'm elected supervisor, I'm moving on. Oh. And the seat will be vacant again, and, have, and you guys will have to do this all over again in December. So, so, that's the provision that I would be here until the election. So, if it dies for lack of a second, I'm not going to be hurt. I mean, I, I just wanted to make sure that, that everybody had that shot. Well, I want to show compassion, so I'll second it. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So, anyway, and then if we can get your call, Deputy Mayor. Good. Please vote. Any discussion? Thank you. Motion failed. Sanchez Lowry now. Okay. And then, um, so, since that we're at that position, um, I'm going to make a motion that the next council meeting that we have people apply for mayorship that they have to have their applications in by 5 o'clock next Wednesday so it can be put on our agenda next Thursday morning. And then we will open it up to the public. We're, we still have time. You know, hopefully we can make some decision. And that's not to say that we can't come back to one of us later too, but um, I think it's a little bit unfair for a lot of the people that want to be mayor that hasn't applied. So that would be my motion for an application process at 5 o'clock next Wednesday, then on the, the next council, then we have a interview process just like we did for uh, Dr. Tricky when he became treasurer. In fact, he might even apply again, apply for mayor too. We don't know. I, I think... Uh, if we're going to do what you're talking about, I think we need to, to uh, maybe have a, even a special meeting to be prior to the next council meeting, which would be, you know, in in a week or you know seven or eight days. So prior to, prior to our next council meeting. Earlier in the day on the council day or a different date? Well, I just think we we need to bet to to hear, um, you know, say you get twenty people. Okay. Do you want to set a time certain, then? Well, I what what would be an available day? What that's convenient for uh, 
for those of us that uh, want to hear that, I would I would see what day is available, and uh, so I think that's what we have to. Okay, well, um, my light's been on. Um, I, I agree with Council Member um, Seller that we ought to uh, do a better job of, of listening to those who presented today. I've only got two minutes, and I really only got the um, resume of just a couple of people. So Jack wasn't why don't we... Jack was told. I'm trying to figure well, out. No, no, that's fine. Jack was told. Oh, you want to stop? Well, I, I don't want to figure out a date. So what about February 7th at, say, 1 o'clock? I'm sorry, when? Early in the day, February 7th. So the regular council day, just do it earlier in the day? 1, one o'clock. That'd be... That works for me. That's the day of the council meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I suppose that would work. No. Okay. Is that clear for the record? Are you changing your motion? Well, uh, yeah, I, I will make the motion that, that by 5 o'clock next Wednesday, the applications have to be to the city clerk, and that we have a special council meeting on February 7th at 1 o'clock to um, deal with the vacancy of the mayor's position. And they would give a, a certain amount of uh, a five minute presentation or something like that. Yeah, we will do it the same way we did for the city treasurer when that seat was vacant, that they will have a three to five minute presentation. Um, you want to ask questions? Is this like a, a boarding commission? So would there be like a. You can do it like. So. Okay, so we'll we'll do we'll just set the date. We'll set the, the parameters later. I, I know this sounds confusing to a lot of people, but because of the Brown Act, we can't talk. So the idea we're we're kind of putting this all out here right now, trying to figure this out as we go. So that's that's where we're at. What are we? What are we? So even though we took uh, public comment tonight, it was about split down the middle. Ten set of points and ten or eleven set of left. Yeah. So we're still working on the appointment? We're still working on the appointment. If we can come to some conclusion to save seventy, eighty, hundred thousand dollars, I I'm in favor of that. Um, it, it doesn't look like we will, but I'd like to try that first. We're not in any our deadline is actually February twenty eighth. We do have time. So at twenty eighth by the February twenty eighth, if we do not come to some conclusion, we're automatically gonna go to an election in November. And in some of those sentiments I've heard tonight that that was kind of the preferred date anyway was the November election. So, um, do you, uh, the mayor, do you have comments on uh, another way to do this? And, uh, you know, I, I think that what we're looking at is between one year and two years of space, one way or the other. If we don't go until November for an election, then that means like well, you know, well, we're not going to the one more election. Year. We're going to be basically almost 18 months without a mayor total, because obviously Mayor Wood was gone in May. Um, so we've been operating with four people since May of this year, and it will be until December of next year before we have that fifth seat. So um, there's going to be probably some issues that get tied to Tim, um, but. You know, that's why I was in favor of appointment, because we can fill that gap sooner. So that's why I'd still like to strive to appoint and to find somebody to fulfill that term. But if we can't, we go to an election. Can we talk about that in a minute still? Because I'd like to make another suggestion for an appointment. Just sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I hold my motion in advance. Can we, there hasn't been a second. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've got a second. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. There hasn't been a second. Yeah. So, make a substitute. so I want to make a motion that we appoint for the rest of the mayor's term uh, Peter Weiss to take his place. And then we, then we would have someone who already knows what's going on here, where to park, what time we do meetings, 
all those things, and then we can move on. And I'll second that motion. And let's vote on that. Motion approved. 3 1. Sanchez, no. Peter White, appointed mayor. So we have a mayor. There you go. Peter White wasn't even here to give testimony about being a mayor. You guys are so. My son. Okay. Kathy Nigel. Public communication. Uh, Kathy, can you hold on just a second? I have a Kathy, question of the city attorney before you box away. Okay, where do we go from here now? What's the process? We need to have uh, Mr. Weiss be sworn in by the city clerk so that he can officially take office and fill that term until December of 20, so you could do that. Presumably, you'd want to add that as an item to your next agenda. Right, so we'll do that at the beginning. Or he could do it privately with the city clerk. There's no requirement to do it in public. I mean, I, I would like him to at least have it done before the next closed session, so do it in the afternoon before closed session. Or, or you can do it tomorrow. I don't care. I mean, just so we have... Yeah, so quick quick clarification. So this is official now, so I would need, I, I'm assuming prior to the upcoming city council meeting, he'll need to be briefed on different items, so I should swear him in as soon as possible, uh, for, so that way it's legally uh, binding. But then we could do a ceremonial swearing in prior to the next city council meeting if you prefer, but that's totally up to the council. Okay, I, I just we, wanted to know what the process is. We also need to vacate the uh, February 7th special meeting. Yeah. I don't think we ever had a second and, and, for yeah, that motion. There wasn't there, a second so. for that, yes. I agree. Okay. All right, thank you. Kathy, you're up. No, I This uh, 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 pretty much took me by surprise, but it's not precedent setting. Uh, we've had a mayor before, Larry Bagley, that served for 12 years uh, as a prior city manager for the city of Oceanside. So it's not precedent setting. It's uh, it, it, and this this gets us to five. I'm uh, hopeful that. Uh, I haven't talked to Peter in several few days. I think that uh, so I, I was I was kind of shocked to see this uh, happen. So anyway, I, I appreciate uh, the effort that the people made to to get here. So yeah, thank you. Is that thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Serious, serious business. Uh, Honorable Deputy Mayor, Council Members, viewing public and attendees, my name is Kathy Michael. I'm with Main Street Oceanside. Uh, the first item I'd like to bring up is as a volunteer in charge of Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, who did get permission um, by the mission to go ahead and do it again for 2018. So thanks for all your community support. Uh, our next event is coming up. Uh, we just got over author's night at, at Sunset Market. It was a great event. We had a dozen authors that participated. But February 1st, been doing this for years, our annual public safety night. Uh, that night will be February 1st. I said that, February 1st. Um, Oceanside Police, Fire, and Lifeguards, our safety team, will be doing static displays that day. Um, Ken Matsumoto, Oceanside Fire, and Linda McLaughlin, Lana DeMont Owens are bringing in the Remembrance uh, vehicle for 9-11 again this year with their display, so that's pretty fantastic. If you've never been down there, we have probably four fire uh, vehicles, at least ten police vehicles, a couple of the lifeguard vehicles, a lot of items for families, children, activity books, how to be safe in your home, at work, and at play, uh, both on land and in the water. So come on down for that. That's a week from tomorrow. Okay, hold on.
to Oceanside Valentine's Week. We're in our third year. So that's why I have my I love Oceanside hat on. I was going to wear my glasses, but I can't. There's no lenses. Can't see through. So we start out uh, on February 6th. Main Street Oceanside will do, will do their uh, Show Your Love for Oceanside Main Street Mixer at the new Bunker House with the Traveler's Hotel from 5 to 9 p.m. Then the Sweetheart Sunset Market with our carriage rides and uh, lots of love at the Sunset Market Thursday night. Then on Saturday, a full pack day. And we start out, um, we'll have the heart down there the whole day. We start out with a family-friendly bike ride. Starts at the amphitheater. We also have our Ferris wheel and carriage rides uh, in Lot 29, just north of the pier. Uh, the Ferris wheel will, will be set up there. Our carriage rides will go along the strand. Then that evening, you have an option, or you can do both. Uh, we have our... Um, movie at the pier, which will be Beauty and the Beast. Parks and Recreation will be putting that activity on. And we have an actual person that will be dressing up as Belle that will come in so the kids can visit with Belle. That evening at Oceanside Museum of Art, we have Tango with your sweetheart. On Sunday is our senior dance with the Valentine's theme out at El Corazon Senior Center. The Oceanside uh, Adventures Whale Watching will be doing cruises all weekend and then a sunset cruise on Valentine's Day. And then on Friday the 16th, the Oceanside Elk Lodge will be doing a uh, Valentine's dance up there. So all of this information is on the Visit Oceanside website, OceansideValentine'sWeek.org. So we hope to see you showing your love, Oceanside. And it will also be on our website, MainStreetOceanside.com. So there's a lot of information. Did I miss the Ferris wheel? No, there's a Ferris wheel. I, I don't see the image. Hold on. I think it's on that other one. Wait, it's on that big page somewhere, probably. Bike ride. Well, can you tell us about the Ferris wheel? I knew I had it. Well, yeah, clear off that just Oh. Um, Thank you. They're also going to, they're requesting selfies. So between the Ferris wheel, the heart, the movie, and the uh, carriage rides down at the pier, sunset, the beach, yeah, the rest of the world is very envious of us here on Oceanside. So we hope to see you downtown that, that week. Great. Thank you. What was that website again? OceansideValentine'sWeek.org or you can go to the VisitOceanside.org website and look under our events. It's right there. Great. Thank you. That's where I'll go. Thank you. Yes, we have off agenda speakers, uh, four speakers. First, we're starting with Nancy Eckwitz Sablet, followed by Anne. I'm so sorry. I can't pronounce it. Um, so thank you so much. Then Katie Popniak and Kelly McCormick. How long are these coming? You decide. Who that means. There are four. There are four speakers. Oh, no, it's just three minutes. You'll have three minutes. I, the, I won't take The that light long. goes green or whatever. The yellow one means you have a minute left, and the red one means skid to a halt. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Nancy Sablat, representing the North County League of Women Voters Oceanside Unit. I was here a couple weeks ago to tell you about an event that we're um, hosting this Saturday at 1 o'clock in the library here at the Civic Center. Uh, it's called Tony the Movie. I hope you were able to find the trailer on it. Uh, Mr. Lowry, look for, look for that. Good. Um, so it's a free screening. It's uh, about, it was filmed here in San Diego, and we hope to see you all there and everyone who's watching at home and here tonight. Thank you. So the filmmaker and the main person, and this is a film about homelessness, 
Yes, filmed right here in San Diego. Uh-huh. And they were going to, they're both the director, the filmmaker, and the uh, person who, Tony, is, they're both going to be at this yeah. screening. Um, okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm Ann Olmstead, President of the League of Women Voters, North Coast, San Diego County. Um, the League of Women Voters of North County wishes to express its support for an initiative currently collecting signatures in the city of Oceanside, the Save Open Spaces and Agricultural Resources Initiative, known as SOAR, is an effort to preserve two components that currently benefit the city and its residents. The League has often spoken in favor of keeping open areas in urban settings to provide parks for recreation and refuge from the busy urban environment that surrounds us most of the day. The League also recently studied the state of agriculture in San Diego County and found that it not only has a robust impact on local economies, but also provides social and aesthetic benefits that cannot be duplicated in a residential or commercial landscape. These include production of fresh food, open vistas, wildlife corridors, and clean air. We believe that preserving existing agricultural and open space is of critical importance because once these resources are gone, they are gone forever. This initiative would be a positive step towards this goal and would allow the residents of Oceanside to vote on what kind of future city they will have. You are welcome to read the entire report at our website, www.lwvncsd.org. Thank you. Choose this one for some reason. Katie Poponiak. Uh, I'm here mainly to speak about, uh, I just don't want to see the city rushing into uh, commercial marijuana until the state gets their act together. Uh, today I attended a training by some officers with the San Diego Police Department and Sheriff's Department from the Narco- Narcotics Task Force and the DEA. And they stated that in their labs, when they've tested products from dispensaries that claim to contain only CBD, such as the lotions and uh, potions, that THC is found in them. Other products that claim not to be created in butane labs, traces of butane have been found in them when analyzed. So if this California track and trace system seed to storefront is not up and running, my concern is that we still could have in the dispensary some very uh, harmful products. Now this uh, meeting this morning was down at the Sheriff's Office in Kearney Mesa it was really about butane hash oil and again some of the, the dispensaries would maybe have this very fancy equipment and it can be, butane is a very flammable and scary thing. Uh, the uh, Cannabis Bureau of Cannabis Control, I, I don't know that it's up and running yet. We haven't heard that. These police officers and sheriff officers that deal with this every day said that they have not heard from them. They would love to educate them about some of the very frightening uh, experiences they've had. One sheriff's deputy actually had some of this blow up on him. Anymore, you might walk into a room or arrest someone in a car, and if they have that in there, it could affect you as a service person. Um, anyway, I think it's a public safety problem, and when they talked about hazmat coming in and the police and the fire and all that, it, it's a, a costly thing also. Uh, is that no? I have time. Um, and I, for the ad hoc committee, I'm hoping that the police and fire are looking at that. Obviously, you have big, much bigger issues you're looking at with the mayor situation right now. But I do think it's kind of fast to uh, make a decision about commercial pot. I also think that many of the residents, the employees got uh, awarded tonight. You, I, I thank you for your service to the community. Uh, so many residents spend a lot of time making this a better place to live. And I feel so strongly, what are these commercial pot peddlers, what are they doing for the community? I don't see them giving back like many other residents. So uh, 
I feel they're just making a profit on us. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Kelly McCormick, and I'd like to share tonight what's happening in Calaveras County. The Board of Supervisors had previously approved pot cultivation there, but in a major about face, they voted this month to ban pot cultivation. They did this after seeing the scope of environmental damage being done. Even some of the permitted growers were discovered to be using dangerous insecticides, fungicides, and rodenticides, including some that are banned in the U.S. These poisons are leaking into the waterways, polluting the soil, and killing wildlife up and down the food chain. One of the species hardest hit is the spotted owl. Here you can see this cute little picture. These are actually threatened already, and this is making it much worse. Um, and this study is done by UC Davis in Berkeley, so it's very reputable. Um, dead animals are found with rat poison in their systems, including large predators that are eating these smaller animals. Uh, and this is also bobcats, coyotes, and mountain lions. This is happening in other parts of Northern California as well. Now, I'd like to make the obvious point that these poisons, if they're ending up in the animals that are eating these plants and eating things that grow in the soil and the water, then they're also ending up in the people that consume the pop products. This past summer, San Francisco Magazine reported on studies done on the pot products at a major uh, marijuana convention called HempCon. All of the pot was grown in California, and all of it came from California dispensaries. Eighty percent of the samples were contaminated with mold, fungus, bacteria, pesticides, or solvents. In concentrates, the toxin level was extremely high because the product was concentrated. Now, I don't have a Ph.D., but if someone is a cancer patient or has a compromised immune system, these poisons and toxins can cause serious harm. On the one hand, we tell people, especially ill people, to eat clean, organic food for their health, but we call a contaminated product medicine. Remember that tobacco used to also be called a medicine. Finally, uh, building on what Katie said, we heard a lot in the ad hoc committee about the seed-to-sale tracking system. Well, as you know, that system is non-functional, and the state has no estimate of when it might actually be available. That means there's no way to really know where the pot on the shelves is coming from or what's in it. Thank you. No further public on this item. Any council members want to make any Nope. Okay. Then. We will now adjourn the meeting to the next meeting, which is Wednesday, February 7th, 3.30 p.m. That's when we have the closed session and the regular meeting starts at 5. Thank you.